I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking with Brian Austin here who's going to tell me some things about, well, I'm not sure what it is except that I heard you say it was a lightning bug. <laughs> yes, sir, that's what I call it, the lightning bug. Now, wh first of all, why would you call it that? Uh, There's a reason behind that name, I'm guessing. Well, there was a slight play on words with it being light as it's a 140 pound airplane. 140 pounds for everything I see here? Yes, sir. Ready for me to, <laughs> to get in. Okay. And the bug part then? Well, that's kind of the basic ultralight glider play on things. And the uh, mother airplane is named after a, a bird. So an insect is kind of in on par with all that. All right. You've done this kind of thing once before, but you told me uh, before we started here, Brian, that this was just a project for mostly your sort of own amusement and education. Is that it? Uh, that's correct. Um, the first airplane that I designed was to show that you could build a light sport airplane for not a lot of money and have really good performance. And that airplane won Best Innovation here two years wow, ago. Wow, excellent. Good for you. Um, what was that one called, just for reference? That was called the Woodpecker. It was the actually woodpecker. in the Sport Aviation January edition of right. 2016. Great. Yeah, I, you have creative names. I like that. Okay, so you got these. Come on over here with me a little bit because you have got the tiniest little engines and props ever and I know there's some people are gonna go wait a minute wait a minute this is an ultralight it weighs that little you can't have two engines on those actually you can it's an ultralight you can have anything you want if you're under 254 pounds so I read so what do we got here I don't recognize these engines well I was a model airplane guy as a young child kid growing up working at a hobby shop and back then we had smaller glow engines but now the trend in model airplanes seem to be either small electric or great big gas. Yeah, I've These noticed that. These are the great big gas engines that they've designed for, you know, 50% scale RC airplanes. Wow. I know the little guys have all gone electric, and I get that. It's but, very efficient But when you you're start small. getting bigger, just as in full-scale aviation, you get too big, it's hard to do electric. So It's true. So that's and why you went with the, these. The technology is coming real fast, but uh, still, when you get into the, the big 50, 60-pound greater model airplanes, the gas engines are, are just more efficient. So when I saw the power and the reliability of those gas engines that they're making for those now, I said, man, I really think I can fly behind those. <laughs> so so the, was the airplane designed around the engine to some extent then? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I designed, I had been designing and playing in the backyard with model airplanes like I've been doing for 25 years. And I had a pretty good wing platform here that was flying really nice. And I just thought that was a good platform to then blow up and, and put these engines on and and fly in. It's sort of vaguely reminiscent of a French airplane, I believe it is, called the Flying Flea, that looks like it's kind of got its parts in the wrong area and like it can't really fly, but there it is flying. I have to admit, Ryan, I'm not doing you any disservice, but this kind of looks like this can't really fly, like it's just a showpiece. <laughs> Have you flown it? Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> I, I hope to be able to fly it here. Beautiful. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out, but I do have two uh, YouTube videos that you can find, two little five-minute videos of it cruising Proof around you've the actually flown backyard it, huh? <laughs> and, and uh, pestering all the neighbors at 6,000 RPM. Okay, so just how noisy does that make it? Is it pretty noisy or is it not so bad? It, it, it's pretty noisy. It, uh, it should be better. That I've got to admit that um, I've built it, flown it, tweaked it, Add it, taken off, got it to the point that it really flies nice. The next step is to spend a little bit more money and actually make a tuned exhaust system where the cans come out over ah, the wing, okay. away from me, letting the wing insulate myself, and the exhaust be back there. So, which will probably make it a little quieter too. It, it make it a whole lot quieter and uh, certainly easier on the pilot being separated by the wing, which is made of styrofoam anyway. So Is that right? Okay, okay. So what I'm seeing here is a welded seal structure, it looks like. It is, 4130, 5.8s, uh, 35 thousandths. With a canard, but not covered with typical material, it doesn't look like. What are you covering it with? You know, when you're dealing with such low horsepower, to be able to, to make it fly and give it the performance that you really want, you can't leave anything on the table. You, you can't leave any lift on the table for sure. So. Um, and weight, I guess we're talking about weight with the covering right now. The main wing is 1.7 Dacron and latex Okay, paint. so that's familiar to us then. This is but I was looking at your control, control surfaces here. back there. They're fascinating. We'll get a view of those. But they look like they're covered with Tedlar or something. Well, the, the laser, I guess, was Tedlar. Um, this is typical model airplane covering called Monaco. Oh, so, really? Monaco? So since I'm flying in a 60 mile an hour range behind model airplane engines, I'm using <laughs> model airplane covering to save weight everywhere that I can. This center section, this canard, and the control surfaces are covered in that model airplane covering. 
you know, I know you told me and I have no reason to disbelieve you, but it just doesn't look like it could be only 140 pounds. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it, so I guess I have to believe you that way, but, and you seem like a believable guy, but that is a really, really light weight. Uh, for, it, especially for a twin engine airplane, you gotta have just about the lightest twin engine the, airplane ever. The, the reason behind most of all of that is these engines are seven and a half pounds a piece. Oh, wow. So I, I'm not really an ultralight guy. I'm a sport aviation and general aviation guy and I just decided to build an airplane that I could fly behind model airplane engines. I saw the power and the reliability of these model airplane engines that are seven and a half pounds seven each. Seven and a half pounds. At 15 pounds, I think I have a huge <laughs> advantage over, you know, all the other ultralight well, engines that are available. About everybody, there. I would say. And I love this. His, uh, your mounting plate for the engines is a piece of wood. Well, that's <laughs> what we use in model airplanes. So when things work, just stick with them. Now, you, you do mention the motor mount, and I'll have to uh, bring something to your attention. Okay. That when you've got two model airplane engines turning 6,000 RPM, no matter how well you balance all of this, there is an incredible amount of harmonics that gets transmitted through this airframe. Ah, okay. And in the very beginning, I only got three short flights when I was actually breaking this steel. Oh, is that so right? So, wow. a redesign. Harmonics can really do a job. Oh, it it's not a, just it, a word. It's incredible. A, yeah. the, this down post was vibrating three inches. Whoa, is that this right? This center post was vibrating three inches. Goodness. And that was before this center section was added, or these cross members were added. But to combat that, to make it all work, these motors are soft mounted. Oh, okay. okay. On a own a motor mount that I made and was actually copied from a very well-known model airplane designer named Merle Hyde, whose son is, holds many world titles, and it's because of his engineering. So this is actually the inner tube out of my Cessna 185. Yeah, it, it looks like a great big, I was just going to say, it looks like a big old inner tube back there. But and that, wow, that's, that's got a lot of absorption to it. That takes 95% of the vibration out. Is that right? And that's what it takes to be able to, to keep this airframe together. So now you're not getting any more of that harmonic uh, uh, vibration to the frame then? Unbelievable what that ice is. Yeah, a little scary doing that with a welded structure, well, with any structure, but a welded structure, you know, you, everything's got a fatigue point. Yes, sir. And you don't want to find it. So tell me a little bit about now, okay, so it's canard, and I, I maybe, maybe some of our viewers don't know about what canards do, but canard means sort of tail in the front. And, but what does it do for you? Actually, this one gets a little more involved in that. Okay. Uh, it started life as a flying wing. But when you got slow and needed to flare, I was running out of airspeed and, and control authority. You, you, there. Yeah, you lost uh, pitch authority then. So I added a small stabilizer, an elevator, that's mixed in with the elevons. So when I pull the stick back, I get an elevator elevon mix. Now that elevon is what keeps the wing from stalling. So I'm changing the angle of attack of the wing to the point that it just quits flying and it starts mushing, and you never get a tip stall or stall of the airplane. You just relax the elevator and it starts flying again. The reason that the canard is there is because realistically when I'm setting in the airplane or let me say start with when I'm not sitting in the airplane, the center of gravity can now fall forward of the wheels. The wheels need to be in about this spot so that I can actually rotate oh, and take sure. off. Oh, sure. I see where you're going with that then. So, if so I you the, needed this as a surface just to get your nose up. I needed to move the center of pressure forward so that I can make the center of gravity fall where I want it to in the airplane so it doesn't fall on the tail without me in it. And the center of gravity is where it wants to be, you know, happily with the wing, now with the canard moving that center of pressure that way so that everything works. Another good advantage of the canard is that I can change that attitude and because I don't have very much leverage with a flying wing yeah because it, yeah because it's so closely coupled elevator, yeah, right right then i don't have that leverage to actually pitch the airplane and rotate so it has to kind of fly off the ground and in the in the beginning early tests i had to get really fast to be able to do that and change in the angle of attack to, to be able to get off the ground so now with the advantage with the canard added to it you get the center of pressure where it is the the wing gets happy everything gets in unison I can use that positive to help me break. Okay, do that again more slowly for me. Well, I can oh, use... Oh, I see. Okay, so you're just changing the angle of attack of the canard. Put a little bit of positive in it so that helps me break ground. And oh, then, I see. Okay. And then from sort there... Sort of like setting the flaps. Yep. You, you, actually, I call it a first and second gear because, <laughs> because that's first gear and that helps me get going and I can fly around at 45, 50 miles an hour with that or I can decrease that and now I can get up to that 63 mile an hour threshold. Okay. 
So um, you're staying legit, uh, part 103 ultralight throughout the flight envelope then? You know, the, the goal was actually for, uh, there's a gentleman in my neighborhood that after I built the woodpecker that showed that you could make a nice light sport airplane for $3,000 that, you know, would compete with anything in his class and outrun it and outlift it and outfly it all the way around, that a guy that had lost his medical could fly something that didn't cost as much as some of the other ultralights that are out there if he had some basic building materials, a single car garage, and a car to tow it out to the field in. Yeah, we are looking at this thing, and, and I feel like I could almost stretch my hands out and reach both wingtips. What kind of span have you got here? It's very well, small. Eight foot wings eight on a foot. three and a half foot panel. So uh, nineteen public, and a half feet. Then. Public math. I'm glad you did that for yeah, me. Yeah, that was uh, that. That's the shortest span I could think of. That's for sure. <laughs> so um, and it almost doesn't look man carrying. I have to admit, it almost looks like this is a little toy airplane of some kind. Except it's a little big for that, I guess. You know, it really is a model airplane that you just happen can ride in. <laughs> I love that. How long did you spend on this project, Brian? Uh, I started this one a year and a half ago. And when was first flight then? Uh, about six months ago. Oh, wow. So you did this in like nine months then? Right after my son was born. So uh, we had a little bit of a hiatus there. And uh, now that he's four and a half months old, I'm back at it. Again. So he's ready to pull rivets now then, huh? He um, <laughs> He's not welding yet, though, and I'm a little worried about that. But I think he'll come around. I think he'll come around indeed with Dad doing all this stuff. Very, very cool. Um, Another thing that's uh, kind of innovative here, the, the first airplane that I designed, I mentioned had the autopilot on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me more about that. And this one also incorporates it. I use model airplane servos to drive small subsystems on the wingtips and a trim tab oh, on the elevator. Okay. Oh, now see. the elevator is tied to the elevons. That way I can trim the pressure on the elevator and that relieves any pressure while you're flying at different air speeds on the elevon. Okay. So they all come back to a, a mixing system that you see them all working on. Oh now, yeah. Okay, with, move the stick uh, right to left for me. Right to left, I have okay. aileron. Okay, all right. And up and down, I have Elevon and Elevator. Oh, I mix. see. They're both. Yeah. Okay. That's how they're Elevons. They're all working together. So, so for when you're when you get to the point that uh, it just quits flying, the wing is washed out to the point that it won't stop. Yeah. Right. It, I see that now. It uh -huh. just descends. So with the stick full aft, go right and left for me. You still have aileron control. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. And, quite a bit of movement actually. And you still have the rudder control, which is very authoritative <laughs> with the prop blast right over. Oh yeah. They're right in line. Yes, I see that. So that, that's a lot of controllability. There's a, um, I use a, a flight controller from a multi-copter or a drone that's got solid state accelerometers and gyros in it. So it knows what level is. Now that I've turned it on, I can use those servos to drive those subsystems and trim it. Oh, I see it, I, I see it moving there, yeah. But when I turn the system on, it just hunts for level. So if the airplane wasn't tied down right now, I could, push this wing tip down and watch that aileron move to fly it back it to level. It would try and get it back to level again then? Yes, sir. My goodness, that's a lot of cool tech. And I also see the iPhone, your primary instrumentation? That's my, <laughs> that's my airspeed indicator, a GPS app. Why not? They work well that way. It's a fascinating project. Um, and again, you're just, you're just doing this for grins. Just for fun. I yeah. gave away all of my ideas on the woodpecker. And um, a company has taken over and started manufacturing a, an autopilot that I just demonstrated. Um, Fascinating. Mind if I ask you what kind of investment you got here? Well, I like to brag that my first airplane, the Woodpecker, was a $3,000 airplane and it won Best Innovation and Best Wood and a Stan Zick Award at Oshkosh. This is a $1,000 airplane with about $2,000 engines. So $2,000? Three, if you, 1000 each on oh, the motor. 1000 each, okay, okay. And $1,000 worth of uh, Is that steel. right? So the very, very interesting project until we chased everybody away saying we got a big doing a big video here. <laughs> you had people crawling all over it. And I, so thank you very much. You can find more about all kinds of strange little airplanes. I guess that's what I do in all in the whole affordable aviation range. And this is affordability just about defined for you. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Brian Austin and myself here at Summit Fun. Dan, thank you.